Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here, Care Partners. Uh, my name is Darian Jones. I'm the Caregiver Education and Digital Specialist. Today, we have a really fun activity we're going to do. Um, we have a special guest, Martha E.F. Wokter. Um, she is going to be demonstrating how to dry and freeze herbs in order to make gift, jar gift jars for everyone. So we do have a page of resources on our website. I commented it in the comments below. You can go ahead and click that. It'll take you to our blog. Um, there's a PowerPoint presentation that Martha created to go along with uh, her, her talk today. And there's also some other great at-home activities for caregivers to do. Um, all right, so I'm gonna bring Miss Martha up here to everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Can you tell us a little about what we're gonna be doing? Yes, um, I'm going to do just a brief intro on um, some of the trials that I did I shouldn't be using my hands, should I? I'm not used to cameras. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just a brief intro on some of the trials that I did, just to let you know what works for growing herbs and what doesn't, but that growing herbs could be a, a completely separate presentation. So that'll be very brief. And then I'll go into the methods that I, I did as trials for preserving herbs. And um, finally, at the end, I'll tell you how to package up the herbs for gifts. Awesome. So, um, first slide is just an introduction. And um, the second slide, the first trial that I did is um, was indoor container gardens. Now, I came from Minnesota. And indoor container gardens are fine in Minnesota, but I found out within a year that my herbs were dying. This, this was my herb garden in a trough. I had a four, five foot grow light over it. But my herbs started dying and I couldn't figure out why. And I had little flying um, critters. And I discovered by doing research that in Houston, even with the air conditioning on, it is so humid that indoor plants that are in soil that has to be moist develop soil mats. So that was an unsuccessful trial. Next slide, I moved to hydroponic, which was extremely successful because no soil mats because there's no soil. So um, you can, uh, then now they, First image is the tower that I'm using, and it's a six foot tower. But if you're interested in growing herbs hydroponically yourself, you can purchase a tabletop, um, which is the second image. I actually thought they were so cute and didn't need one since I had the six foot tower that I bought it for my sister. And it grows six herbs um, very successfully. So, and it also has a light. It, it's um, typically about $150. You can buy it at Target. Sometimes Sorla Tub has it. But um, a couple of times a year, they go on sale for $100. So that's really, it's, it's a nice system for $100, and it's quite easy to operate. Next slide. I also did outdoor, and this is on my patio, herb gardens and that also was successful, no soil mats. Um, that particular one is a lemon balm, which needs shade, so it's growing on my deck or my patio. Next slide is um, a year ago, um, in the fall of, I have to think of the years, fall of 2018, I rented a plot at the Montgomery County Senior Garden and had to relearn how to garden entirely, um, not flat gardening, but trenches, et cetera. So there is when my garden was early and I found out that most herbs do very well, but some herbs that will do well in sun and other regions um, do not do well, don't survive the Houston summer. So I did a lot of trials there. Next um, slide. I um, did a number of different trials on preserving the herbs that I was growing because the, the herbs were growing so quickly. 
that um, I found out, again, the humidity in Houston prevented me from being able to hang dry my herbs as they do in many areas of the country. So the first successful trial I did was freezing herbs. Now what I do, it's really very simple, um, is cut up the herbs very tiny. I'll show you an image of that actually. Here's an image of what the herbs look like. You just cut them up very small and that the fresh herbs and then you you fill up each of the um, ice cube trays so you can purchase the ice cube trays any place they can they will talk about where you can purchase supplies at the end um, next slide i label my i do a lot of different herbs so i label my trays and just write on them with a marker which herb is in that particular ice cube tray next slide shows um that shows actually how the herbs how what the herbs need to look like for two of the methods i'll talk about drying in a microwave and drying in a dehydrator um so this is what the herbs need to look like for two, the freezing and the microwave next slide once the herb is is in the the um, actually I'm sorry this shows this just shows how full the the um, slots need to be in the cube tray you fill them up with with the herb next slide and then you fill the that um, slot with whatever medium you're going to use so for basil I fill it up with olive oil for um, something that I'm going to use for tea, I fill up with water. In fact, this is lemon balm, which I'm going to be using for tea, so I filled it up with water. If I'm, if I'm going to be freezing cilantro, I use lemon juice. You can use lime juice. You can use any liquid that freezes well. Next slide. I label baggies ahead of time with the herbs that, that I'm going to be transferring. The ice cube trays take up a lot of room in my freezer, and I don't know about you, but I don't have that much room in my little freezer. So um, the baggies are a lot more compact than the ice cube trays. So once it's frozen, and it takes approximately 24 hours, but make sure it is solidly frozen, you can then transfer it into the labeled baggie. Next slide. And you have this cube that um, I find to get them out of the, the slot, I just use a, um, um, a butter knife, um, just, just a table, that the type of knife that you would use um, before eating your dinner. And I slide it or, or just poke it in along the sides so that it releases easily and then it just comes out as a solid cube in this particular one is mint and olive oil now i do mint two ways um, i like to use mint fresh mint with um leg of lamb so i preserve that freeze the mint in olive oil for the leg of lamb and i also freeze mint in water to use um, as ice cubes for iced tea. Next slide is um, beginning, is showing you how to set the herbs for the dehydrator. Actually, we're going to discuss the dehydrator next. And I find that um, I, I, I tried a number of different ways and I find out it is found out it is much easier to use a full stem. They recommended just putting the leaves on there because the leaves are all you're going to use. But then it was very difficult to work with. So if you dry the entire stem as I have on there and place it on the, the tray, you need to make sure their air can come through the, the tray. And on my particular dehydrator, there are five trays. So I stack them. I fill up one tray 
and then stack the next one on top and fill it up. And um, it, so just make sure that air can circulate because that is what's dehydrating the herbs. So this is the dehydrator tray. Next slide shows um, the clip. Now the clips are necessary um, to allow the dehydrator to work properly. So this shows you what the clip looks like. Now, um, one end goes in a slot on top, the less complicated end, and the more, the, so the slot on top first, and then um, once it's in the slot in the top of the lid, you just clip it underneath, and um, I have two clips on my dehydrator. And the, the next slide shows the dehydrator with the clip on it. So it shows what it looks like with the clip. Next slide. I run the dehydrator. This is a, a very simple method. Actually, it's easier than the microwaving method if you have a dehydrator. I purchased my dehydrator from Target. It, they have the many places and it was $35. It's a nice dehydrator. So it, it's clipped and it, um, the, the slide after showing the dehydrator clipped shows the dehydrated herb. Um, you wait until it is um, completely dry. You can see through the top and you can tell when, it, when it's dry. Um, the next clip shows um, the, the dehydrated herbs in the jar. So you just um, take the leaves off of, they're, they're very easily crumbled. So you just crumble them off the stem, toss the stem, and you just have the leaves. And actually, um, you'll notice that once they're in the jar, it smells leafy. It really doesn't smell like the herb. But if you crumble it with your fingers, that, that releases the, the scent if you really want to smell the herb. And I have found, just by trial and error, that some herbs, herbs smell better as they're drying than others. The lemon balm, which makes glorious tea, um, smells terrible, actually, when it's drying. But the chocolate mint, it smells like chocolate mint as it's drying. So that's, that's really a beautiful smell. The next one shows um, a couple of containers that I have used for herbs. I can show you these. Um, you can use any small jar. You can see how small it is. Both of these were made by, so it's just any, it, it needs to be glass, not plastic. But the lid is this lid is plastic, so that's fine. And the other one is just um, a half pint mason jar, and it can be it can be made by anyone. Some of them you can buy mason jars that have really pretty decorations on them, uh, but that does that's up to you. And especially if you're using them for gifts, you might want to find a a pretty jar. This doesn't hold as much, but that's okay because you can do an assortment of herbs uh, for a gift. Next slide shows um, some of the, the labels that I use for labeling. Now you can just write on it, but I find that these pretty labels, um, here's, they're just adhesive, they're easy to work with, although I don't have a lot of dexterity. So they, they do take a bit of work. You can just get um, uh, square or rectangular labels and write on them. Um, that would be easier, uh, but it's, it's up to you how decorative you want to make it. And then, then some often I'll put just, these are also just adhesive labels. So you can, can put little decorations. I'll show you a finished jar. Um, actually, um, the next picture shows, um, and it doesn't, you, it's not, it doesn't have to be um, 
art is not perfect. Um, if you want want perfect, then you have have a mold out and have plastic. So <laughs> you can see that mine is a little cat um, catawampus, I guess is the term. Um, but it, that just adds can add a little bit to the charm. You don't necessarily want if you want it absolutely even, I have used a ruler to make sure it's, um, I have done that, I did not with this one because I wanted to show you that it can be charming even without that um, having it be exact. Um, the next picture shows the finished jar and actually I dried these this morning and this, I did actually a combination of mints um, because just be, because it's an experiment mint as you probably know grows profusely and I have a lot of mint out of my garden I have lemon mint chocolate mint spearmint and sweet mint now I did the lemon mint separately but um, typically I'll do just one type of mint or one type of herb in a jar. But I've been starting to um, play around and do different ones. So this, this jar has the sweet mint, the chocolate mint, and the spearmint. So I'm hoping that it, it's good. Now you can do, as I said, herbs for culinary purposes, or you can do them for teas. The last slide shows you some possible sources. Now, when I check today, um, the grocery stores are delivering, although there is a delay um, with that. A lot, most places you can at least pick up curbside, so you can have someone do that. But I suspect that um, everyone will be delivering um, pretty soon. So your herbs can be delivered or picked up curbside just from the grocery store if you don't grow them yourself. They, they have fresh herbs at most grocery stores that you can purchase. The other supplies, um, at this point, Target and Michaels were the ones who had the, the supplies. Um, and Michaels actually had more. Um, but I did purchase both of these jars at Target. So, um, but Michael's at this point has more of the supplies that you would need. Um, and right now it is only curbside. It's not delivered to your door. Target will deliver groceries to your door. So I see no reason why they wouldn't also deliver the jars. Now, if you're going with someplace like Target, um, when I did the search this morning, they do have the half pint mason jars. And you can buy multiple, you can buy packages with four or 12 um, of the half pint mason jars. And so those are easy to get. And since Target delivers groceries, I see no reason why they wouldn't also deliver the mason jars. Target doesn't have the, the um, adhesive letters that I showed you but they do have um, stick on labels, the rectangular labels. Um, so you could have your products actually delivered to your door with your groceries if, if you want to go through someplace like Target. It depends on what your needs are. Now, um, this is not a slide, but I know she sent you um, a resource. I did some research on different things that you can do at home. So this resource has links to, um, and in fact, there are more, even more now, and they're adding, more people are creating virtual tours every day. Um, so what I put on there is um, gardens, museums, parks. Um, I explained a little bit about which um, how what their virtual tour is like. Some of them are simply photographs with with um, narration that you read. Some of the virtual tours are um, actually video 
or they probably call it something else now, but it's moving pictures. Um, uh, and some of them even to music, which is beautiful. So you can explore some of those different links if you're interested in um, exploring some of that. I know more and more people are doing performances online. So you can look up your favorite performer and see if, if they have an online performance yet also. Um, now I am writing a book, it's almost finished on, um, it's a fully annotated book on Shakespeare's plants. At this point, um, the, the guide is finished, the book is finished, but I am adding introductions for each play where I'm proposing a themed garden uh, for that place. So for instance, Hamlet is a memorial garden. Midsummer Night's Dream is a fairy garden. So I'm doing designs for those gardens and actually creating the gardens. I have a website which is at the top of your sheet um, discussing and I, I post a new blog each week. So if you're interested in reading about plants, gardens, or Shakespeare plants in particular, um, you, you can go to my website. I also am um, sending my 80-year-old my sister pictures, just texting her pictures of the gardens that I'm creating. And I also have designed um, gardens in the backyard of a friend. So I texted her all those pictures we talked on the phone and she had a virtual tour of all of those gardens. So you can do something more informal as well. Thank you very much. Thanks again so much, Martha. Um, I'm gonna take a look at our comments section really quick. Uh, looks like we don't have too many comments, but I had a couple of questions. Okay. Um, so can you tell me just a little bit about your background and how you got into this? I was an actor as my career, but a stage actor, not, not film. So um, I've been in the arts for many years. And I, in about over 10 years ago, I um, started moving in the direction of healthcare. And I am a certified care manager. It's a step beyond case management, it's a broader scope than case management, in that case management is um, work with the physical and the medical needs. I, I do case management about 10% of the time, but 90% of what I do is quality in whatever form that takes. And um, as part of the, um, but I also, started gardening with my master's thesis in, um, my master's is in theater, and my book was on the flora of a Midsummer Night's Dream. So this book is actually, I'm just going further and doing all of the plays. Very cool. Um, and I guess if there's one main takeaway, or what's the most, or I guess can you explain to us some of the the relaxing properties of gardening and, and what that does to you for your mental health. I am so glad you asked that, Darian, because I read a recent study that, that indicates that there are antidepressant microbes in the soil. So I have always considered gardening my therapy and I found out it really is my therapy. But I also wanted to make one other point. When I was in Minnesota, I was, I was suffering from seasonal affective disorder in the winter. So I was prescribed a therapeutic light. Well, I didn't need that therapeutic light anymore, so I sent it when I moved to Texas, so I sent it to my sister. But I find right now, as we all have unease and we have down days, but I have five five foot grow lights in my bedroom because I have four of them on the hydroponic tower and another one over the trough. And when I go into my bedroom, the other day I was feeling really down. So I dragged myself into my bedroom, thrust myself onto the bed facing those lights and within 20 minutes, 
I was good to go for a day and a half. I was uh -huh. cheered. So get Crowlights. Um, they really, really help. Wow, that's awesome. Um, really interesting. And then the last question, um, what is your one piece of advice for people who may be stuck at home right now to just try and stay happy and active? I would say um, music, find your, your favorite music. That's, it, that is, um, I, I, the arts actually are, our humanity is in the arts. I truly believe that. And the arts are comforting, whether it's music. And probably music is what we have most accessible right now. Um, if you can have, um, if you have plants to play with, play with your plants, get your fingers in the soil. If you have a backyard, go out in the backyard, get some sunshine, get your fingers in the soil. I know a lot of people don't like getting their fingers dirty. I garden barefooted and barehanded because I like the soil on my hands. So um, if you're having a down day, put on some bright lights and listen to some music. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for being here and sharing this awesome activity with us. Um, as I mentioned, um, it is on our website. We made a blog post. So be sure to head over to www.carepartnerstexas.com. Um, in our caregiver blog section, there's a blog post with all of her re reference material that she referenced and her PowerPoint as well. Um, so I guess thank you just one more time, and we're going to say goodbye to you for now. Um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. And with us, thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, Care Partners is trying to do as much of this online education and resources for you guys as we can. We're trying to do something in the morning and something in the afternoon. So be sure to follow our Facebook and YouTube pages for that. We'll be live or have some sort of interactive video or activity to do for you guys. Um, again, just be sure to check out our website for updates on all of the COVID. We're continuing to monitor the COVID situation and we'll keep you updates with everything that Care Partners is doing with our programs in the meantime. Um, again, just thank you guys so much for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow with some more content. Um, have a great day, everyone.